years ago, I did a video review of the original OVA for Record of Lotus War. At that time, the OVA was out of print, and sadly, the manga adaptation was also out of print as well. And to this day, none of the Lotus manga is available legally in English. However, since then, Funimation licensed rescued all the anime, both the TV series and the OVAs. And they're not the company I expected to do that. I expected, like, Disco Town. And now Seven Seas has done something that I never expected anyone to do. They licensed the first novel and gave it a fantastic edition in 2017 with wonderful hardcover, with gold leaf, and everything. I got it for myself for Christmas and was finally able to read it fairly well. The OVA and the novel have a... They share a common framework and characters but have some dramatic changes from the novel to the anime. Some of these are clearly due to the change in medium, with anime being more visual and thus not being able to delve as deeply into the psychological mindsets of the characters and their worldview and narrative. Others appear to be due to length restrictions, with 13 episodes basically covering about two novels before getting into an anime original ending, and then also restrictions due to budget. The book follows the party of Parn, an inexperienced warrior seeking to prove himself and try to make the world a better place, and his companions. Deedlet the Elf, standard archetype elf looking for adventure. Eto, Parn's childhood friend and a priest of Ferris, one of the gods of good. Slain, wizard looking for knowledge, but also something else. He doesn't know what, though. Woodchuck, a thief out for wealth, and also with a chip on his shoulder, due to having had several years spent in prison, him, a dwarf looking for the missing daughter of the priestess of Marfa, another a goddess of good, and also a friend, niece. The party goes on their adventures along the backdrop of an invasion of the island of Lodos, led by the forces of the Dark Empire of Marmo, led by Emperor Feld. Feld is advised by a mysterious sorceress known only as Carla. That's, that's where the similarities end. In the anime... Two major characters of the supporting cast who end up coming to the fore are the characters of Ashram and Pirates. Ashram being number two of Beld, Emperor of Marmo, and Pirates being his romantic interest and in turn his lieutenant. In the anime, Ashram and Pirates are set up very early on as the dark opposites of Parn and Deedlet. Both are skilled warriors, and when we first meet Ashram, he's already incredibly skilled, Parn is less experienced. And both pairs care for each other, though Ashram and Piratus aren't really able to show it because in Marmo, because of their cultural hang-ups doing a danger for being a dangerous land of evil, it's considered a sign of weakness. The anime. Ashram and Parn first meet during the sacking of an Elanian fortress, with Parn witnessing Ashram's attack and swearing revenge. And then further throughout the anime, when the narrative moves into the Marmo camp and we see what Beld is up to. In addition to seeing the plotting of Beld and Carla, you'll see Beld and Ashram together, again, setting up Ashram as Beld's number two, Ashram and Piratus, setting up the romance, and then the interrelationship between um, Ashram and the Wagnerd, Beld's court magician. In the novel, though, when we cut back to Beld and Carla, Ashram doesn't show up at all. He only shows up briefly at the conclusion of the book and the battle between the Empire of Marmo and the Valis Alliance, with Ashram reacting to the final duel between Beld and King Cashew. And Piratus doesn't show up at all. By comparison, Wagner, Beld's court musician, is dramatically more visible, has a much more direct connection to our protagonists, though he and the heroes of Lodos don't interact in the story at all. It leads to the other dramatic change. Much more time is spent in characters' backstory in this installment. The OVA, we get backstory for Parn and his goal to redeem his father's honor and memory, and Gim and his goal to bring Lydia back to Nice. But here we get much more backstory for Woodchuck and Slane. We learn about Slane's time in the Wizard Academy, why he left, the connection through him and Wagner. Wagner was one of Slane's classmates who was not only expelled, had a lock placed on his magic so he cannot cast spells without great physical pain because he was expelled for casting dark magic. Also, the book sets up that Woodchuck had been incarcerated for almost 20 years for a heist gone wrong and was only just released, putting a chip on his shoulder that leads to him making a, 
particular decision at the end of the story doesn't make in the anime. In the anime, the event that happens is completely involuntary. Additionally, the dungeon crawl that takes up the entirety of the first episode of the anime takes up about two paragraphs of the novel, and none of the sort of development that happens there occurs. The changes are less dramatic. Um, in the, the sequence in episode three with the Elenian Fortress never happens at all. Arn and company meet Deedlet and Woodchuck in the middle of a festival, which would have probably been very expensive to animate. Also in the OVA, the battle between the Valis Alignments and Marmo is a general pitched battle with no real tactics or maneuvering and which generally goes badly for the Alliance. Whereas in the book, it is much more strategically planned. Both sides come to the table with a, come to the fight with a battle plan and they maneuver and carry it out. With uh, Parn and Cashew being together, taking on a flanking force of Marmo, and then once they are successfully repelled, they join up with the main force, and then at which point both they lose track of the battle, not because the battle is either going poorly one way or another, but because battles are chaotic. And then, at which point, the focus, since we're on Parn's perspective, is just the chaos of the fighting, and then until things settle down, the final duel with Bell. As an aside, this is another change from the book to the OVA, but this also comes up in the Chronicles of the Heroic Night TV series, where they incorporate the book version of that change, so it it is less of a of something that bears meant. Now, Carla, it, I said it in my review of the anime series, and it bears repeating here. She is one of my favorite antagonists in media because her worldview is entirely consistent, but without necessarily being something that makes sense from a, from a human perspective, because that's the point. She's lived so long and through so many bodies that she is that she does not think of things in a human way anymore. She's lost touch with her humanity. It makes her a more interesting and unique protagonist. Now, from the sounds of things with... Um, Discussion of the new source book for D D Fifth Edition, where Mordekainen talking about his motivations. He has apparently been either retooled as to working similarly to Carla in terms of his reasons for doing what he does. But from I've done more research on this, near as I can tell, his depiction of his motivation as being similar to Carla's doesn't seem to appear until after Lodos gets a U.S. release in the eighties. I don't know if that aspect of the character was inspired by Lotos. Uh, Mordekainen was a character from Gary's original game, who was then incorporated into the larger Greyhawk campaign setting, so I'd have to find out more from that. That seems like not something from the original game from the original games. And certainly Mordekainen doesn't have quite the same justification behind his actions of having lived for centuries and gone through numerous different bodies over the course of trying to carry out their goal. Now, The Grey Witch is not a groundbreaking novel now when it comes to modern heroic fantasy. It, like, there are plenty of other books which have similar tone to them and similar scope from Grey, from the uh, Dragonlance novels by Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman to numerous other Dungeons and Dragons licensed novels. And certainly with as with Legend of Galactic Heroes, it's a genre that's become well-trod, and even within Japanese animation, numerous works have paid reference to Lodos and been inspired by it. So, if you've seen the works that have were influenced by Lodos before coming to Lodos, it may seem very much old hat and cliche. But it does bear mentioning when you pick this up, or if you read this or watch the show, the reason it seems cliche is because, as far as Japanese epic fantasy is concerned, this is where the cliches came from. And the book is still a very exciting and engaging read. Uh, the Grey Witch is available from Amazon.com and Right Stuff. Uh, there will be links in the show notes below. Picking up the book, or anything else for that matter, through those links will help support the show, particularly since we're, I'm no longer monetized. So until next time, thank you very much for watching. See you then.
Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. And also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.